Melanie, welcome back. And Pleasure to be we're here. We're thrilled to be able to have the opportunity to interview you at AAO 2016. Tell us about the research that you presented this year. First of all, thank you so much for having me back again. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, I uh, presented yesterday at the Retina paper session on uh, localized precursors to geographic atrophy. So as you know from um, last year, our lab primarily focuses on finding OCT-based biomarkers for progression of age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. Um, so in the past, our lab has done a lot of macula-wide analyses. We've looked at predictors across the entire macula. Um, and recently, I became interested in finding localized precursors to progression of AMD. Um, so the paper I presented yesterday was looking at two, three, and four-year precursors to uh, geographic atrophy. And what were the results? The results were very interesting. So we found that localized areas preceding geographic atrophy um, had lower true retina volume, neurosensory volume, as well as higher Drusen volume. Um, we also found that, um, interestingly, there is a an order in the deterioration of layers preceding geographic atrophy. Um, so we found that we, you know, four years before the onset of geographic atrophy, we lose the photoreceptor layer. And after that, we lose the retinal pigment epithelial layer. And after that, we lose, you know, other, the external limiting membrane and have increased choroidal signal. So there's, there seems to be a progression in, um, in the loss of layers and the changes in the OCT um, that we'd like to further study. We also found that um, regions preceding geographic atrophy had two special OCT features that have been previously studied by our lab. The first is hyperreflective foci, which are above Drusen, and the second are OCT reflective Drusen substructures, which I actually presented about last year, um, which are substructures within Drusen. Um, and that was very interesting to us because previously, you know, we had spent so much time um, looking at these features and found that they were highly predictive, and it's really exciting that they now occur in that exact region that then progresses to atrophy. So are you looking to use this data to update the algorithm as to how to monitor and measure and potentially predict the progression of AMD? Absolutely, and I really like how you use the word algorithm. Um, so previously, after finding a lot of the macula-wide features, we did exactly that. We created um, an A2A or a, a, an OCT risk calculator. And uh, that allows us to input values for age, sex, as well as OCT features to pop out a value about uh, that, per that patient's risk of developing geographic atrophy or progression of AMD. Um, so, so now that we have more information about the localized precursor geographic atrophy, that would definitely be something that we consider, perhaps creating some sort of calculator um, to predict progression. Um, and we're hoping that in the future, we can continue to study this sequence of lesions that occurs before the onset of geographic atrophy, because an understanding of the natural history of geographic atrophy can allow us to better target our therapeutic strategies for a disease or a feature of a disease that is associated with vision loss but currently has uh, no uh, treatment that is uh, effective. So tell us a little bit about some of the other work that you're doing. Sure, so um, currently I'm a fourth year medical student um, and I'm doing my clinical rotations right now and applying into ophthalmology residency. Um, so a lot of my uh, research from the last two years with Dr. Toth has been really what I've been continuing. Um, so um, again, a lot of uh, biomarkers to predict progression of AMD. Um, I'm currently wrapping up this uh, precursors to localized geographic atrophy paper. Um, and then hopefully um, looking at um, like you said, uh, integrating this research into a more clinically applicable situation. When you mention biomarkers, clearly there are OCT-derived biomarkers, but there are also serum-derived biomarkers. Are there any particular serum-derived biomarkers that you're looking at or you believe have promise? So we haven't looked at serum drive biomarkers. Um, our, our lab mainly does image processing and, and uh, specifically OCT imaging. Um, we are trying to look at 
the correlation of the biomarkers on OCT on different forms of imaging. Um, and we've looked at color fundus, photo, autofluorescence, as well as the infrared um, that we have available to us. Um, so that's been interesting, although we found that OCT has provided us with a lot more information because it's a 3D form of imaging that provides cross-sectional visualization of you know, subretinal structures and layers at a very detailed level. Um, so not serum. We did previously try to look at some genetic um, associations with these OCT biomarkers that we were finding. Um, I worked with um, some of uh, our collaborators at the National Eye Institute to see if we could um, harvest the data that we've collected through the AREDS-2 study on genetic biomarkers and see if there was any correlation with the OCT reflective drusen substructures or the hyperreflective foci. Um, at this point, we did not find a correlation, um, but definitely something we'd like to pursue further. So tell us about your next steps. Absolutely. So, um, like I said, I'm applying for ophthalmology residency now, um, so uh, hoping to match uh, in a, a program, um, uh, one, of, one of my uh, programs of choice. And uh, I'll be pursuing my intern year next year in um, preliminary medicine and uh, pursuing three years of ophthalmology, during which I hope to continue um, a lot of the research that I've been doing with Dr. Toth. Um, I also um, started uh, an eye clinic in India in January. We just established one in a uh, rural part of India. We transformed one of our ancestral homes into a permanent clinic site um, to provide care to a lot of the underprivileged uh, population there. Um, so I'm hoping to continue to monitor that um, and uh, continue to improve the outcomes. Um, so we're, we're very excited to see that unroll as well. That's an absolutely wonderful, wonderful initiative. We congratulate you on thank that. Thank you. So, Marnie, thank you again for sharing your important work, and we look forward to following you as the years go forward. And uh, obviously, I think the ophthalmology community will benefit from your research and your enthusiasm. Thank, thank you. you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you.